chest. Looking to push tempo here, the Pelicans. Funny hops into a bucket. Hold that follow through. He posed. That's right. This is what takes you to another level. Welcome in and what the Pell is up, everybody. This is Believe in the New Orleans Pelicans with your host, Elliot Clough, at Elliot Clough on Twitter. Before we get started today, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to this channel. You hit that like button for us. That really helps us out with exposure. And if you're listening on the podcast, any podcasting platforms, make sure you follow and or subscribe depending on where you are listening to this podcast. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, you too, listen on listening or watching on YouTube, you head over to Apple Podcasts, leave a rate and a review that really helps us out in exposure over there as well. And this goes for, for both platforms. Make sure you tell a friend about the podcast or the videos that really helps us out there as well. And if this is, if this is your first time hearing about the YouTube channel, head over to YouTube, type in at Elliot Clough, not the at, because I don't think YouTube has the at thing in their, in their handles and such, but head over there and subscribe there too. You're going to be getting smaller clips of the pod there as well, not just the whole thing. So if you're running a little late, you want to catch a little bit of the pod in your day, but aren't able to listen to the whole thing, you can check it out. Just a little bit of segments on YouTube. But for those of you who are deep, diehard Pelicans fans, you know today was the day, the inauguration, if you will, of Stan Van Gundy as the head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans. The press conference, essentially, is what we had today. Miss Gail Benson spoke, Mrs. Ben Mrs. Benson spoke, uh, David Griffin was there, Trajan Langdon spoke as, spoke as well, and of course, SVG was there. Griff, Trajan Langdon, and SVG all took questions from the media. So, also, the whole thing was broadcast on Twitter, YouTube, uh, probably, I'm, I'm assuming on their website as well. I also live tweeted the whole thing, so if you missed any of that and you want to just get a quick rundown of some SVG and David Griffin quotes, you can head over there. It's at Elliot Clough on Twitter, and... If you want to see the entirety of the conference, you can check that out on YouTube. They recorded it, put it up on YouTube, and you'll have to fast forward through the first 20 minutes of it because uh, the, the Pelicans are notorious for not starting things on time. But anywho, we're breaking it down for you. Some things, some of the uh, things that Griff said, some of the things that Trajan Langdon said, some of the things that Stan Van Gundy said. Van Gundy did receive a lot of the questions. So talking about what drew him to New Orleans, what he's excited about this team for, what he's going to do with Lonzo Ball, the front court on defense, stuff like that. So, And some of the implications of the things that he said. So we're not going to just be saying verbatim what Van Gundy went into, but we'll say some of the quotes, break it down a little bit. So here we go. So fr from the beginning, we'll start off there and then we'll bounce around a little bit depending on topic, um, just so you know the structure of today's show. But for Griff, he said from the get-go, Mrs. Benson spoke first, and then she, she gave owner speak, you know, said we got our guy, all this stuff, and, and that she was excited for Stan and his wife to be coming to the city. So that's where it started. And then SVG uh, was, was spoken about by David Griffin. He said the same thing. We got our guy. This is the guy that the Pelicans wanted in New Orleans to be their head coach. They got the right guy at the right time is what Griff said. He also mentioned and thanked Alvin Gentry for what he did in New Orleans. But he said that Alvin Gentry actually helped the process. I don't want to read into this too much, but um, being that Gentry is such a good dude, this doesn't really surprise me. But apparently Griff had or Gentry maybe volunteered to, to talk to some of the candidates about what it was like to coach in New Orleans. I'm assuming that's what happened. I'm, I'm assuming that Gentry didn't participate in the vetting process by any means, but was there to be somebody to review the position, review what the front office is like, the, the newer front office, what it's like to coach these players and such. So, you know, high character move by Gentry. You can say what you want about his substitutions, about his lack of accountability, about the lack of defense when his, with his time there, but clearly a guy who cares about the city of New Orleans, about the organization, um, and just, just a good dude. But we already knew that. So um, to continue... We heard this before. Uh, Griff went into the the uh, fact that nine people were interviewed. We know 
We know SVG, obviously. We know Ty Lu. We're assuming Will Weaver, Jamal Mosley. Those were the two other names that were big. And then you can throw in probably like Kenny Atkinson and um, Billy. I don't think Billy Donovan was in the running. They talked with Doc Rivers. Billy Donovan got hired so quick in Chicago. It's 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 not likely. But there's no need to speculate. We can hope that uh, Jerry Stackhouse is part of that. But but who knows? So anyway, of these nine candidates, basically what SVG said, or what excuse me, what Griff said about SVG is that he gave them the best quote optionality. So uh, that's not a word you hear on a regular basis, but you can probably deduce what it means, right? So to dive a little bit deeper into that, he said that SVG is a winner and that he's won a lot of regular season games. And he's won a lot of postseason games. So basically what they're looking for is a guy who has versatility as a head coach, who is willing to not only lead this team to wins, but to develop players as well. And he's developed players before. I mean, he, he was pretty big in developing Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade spent his first however many years in Miami and SVG was there for the first three years. So SVG was a big part of development for Dwayne Wade and, and he helped with White Howard as well and, and integrated a system in Orlando that helps some veterans improve their game too. So not only do the Pels want to develop players, develop Brandon Ingram, develop Zion Williamson, uh, and the rest of the young guys, whoever they bring in in this year's draft, he said he, Griff wants to create a culture of sustainable winning. And that's what SVG is going to bring. That's who SVG is. That's what he will do. It will not just be developing. It will not just be win now. Because the Pels aren't in a win now situation, they're in a place where they can build for the future and they have a bright future. So in all likelihood, that wasn't going to happen with some of the more inexperienced coaches, the Will Weavers, the Jamal Mosleys, who hadn't been head coaches. You have to see that track record of being able to do both, of winning at such a high level. And, and that's what SVG's done. And, and Griff went into this. SVG went into it as well. But from a relationship perspective, Griff said that Stan was a genuine, sincere guy that is also a teacher. And, and that's what it comes down to, too, for the development part of it. Uh, he's very he, he's very caring. He, he genuinely wants these players to learn. Now, um, before we get into the questions for what Stan took uh, as uh, now the head coach of the New Orleans Pelicans, he started off by saying that he wanted to coach again. And he was asked about this a little bit later on, so we might get into it at another point in today's show. He said that he wanted to coach again, but he was only going to do it if it was a quote great opportunity he said that this was it new orleans proved to be the place where he would get that opportunity he said griff is a proven gm he's won in this league before he's done a lot of good things with some good teams cleveland phoenix and he also mentioned the mix of youth and the veterans is something that attracted him to this job as well. He really likes what the young guys bring, but he also likes what the vets bring, what Drew Holiday and J.J. Redick bring, especially J.J. Redick considering their relationship. And they got into that today too. If you want to hear more about that, you can check out the actual broadcast. We don't need to go into it. We've talked about it so much here on Believe in the New Orleans Pelicans. But also, Griff went into, or sorry, not Griff, Stan went into this saying, He's been working, and the front office has also been working, on hiring their staff, which is great to hear. We've heard the rumors about Ime Udoka. We've heard the rumors about Charles Lee. There will be a podcast on that coming tomorrow, by the way. But they're already working on hiring a new staff, which is great to hear. We didn't hear more about that today, any, or sorry, yesterday, any, any um, names or anything like that. They didn't specify any names. So those are the only two we really have to roll with. I know... Ali Cosell put out an article talking about speculation of what other guys could be brought in for a staff. But um, SVG continued, said that he has been in contact with everyone who's on the team. One can assume that doesn't account or account for the guys who are free agents like Derek Favors, like Frank Jackson, like Julio Okafor, like Kenrich Williams, Etwan Moore. Not really sure. I'm really hoping they bring back Etwan. And if they bring back Derek Favors, 
both of them on like maybe one plus one club options or just at least one year like that's it no more because they are getting a little older they provide value but eh. anyway so he's been in contact with everybody who will be on this team this coming year had conversations with them over the phone and he's planning to start in-person conversations as well which is great to hear he's already involved with the team already making moves for the team this coming year in terms of looking at a coaching staff he's been watching film he's been in contact with the analytics department which is something we will also get into hit just about every topic in today's presser so we'll get into those analytic conversations as well so one thing that really stood out from today's press conference and just in general about this hire, about this hire of Stan Van Gundy, bringing him to New Orleans, is the relationship that Van Gundy and the front office have, more specifically David Griffin. These two, this is going to be a bromance, folks. They're going to get along, and they're going to get along well. And, and Griff said at one point in the conference, that press conference, that he sees a lot of himself and his wife in Van Gundy and his wife's relationship. They're, they're similar. They're hard workers. They talked about culture. They talked about building a, a culture based off shared values. And, and they talked about a lot of the similarities, the desire to, to win and to build, but also to win now. And yeah, I mean, SVG just fully trusts David Griffin and the rest of the front office to do their jobs. I mean, I haven't gone into this too in depth, but you know, typically when a person has been in a position of control elsewhere, i.e. when SVG was the president of basketball operations with the Detroit Pistons, when they, tra when they traverse to a different place or a different place of work, specifically, where someone else holds the keys to that position, it's easy to let your ego get in the way. It's easy to be like, I wouldn't do that. It's easy to be like, I don't want to do that that way, your way. I want to do it my way because I've been the boss before and I know what I'm doing. Not what SVG is doing at all in this position. He is handing the keys, the car, the house, and the garage to Griff in the front office in terms of managerial movement, in terms of scouting, in terms of evaluation, in terms of free agency, and the draft Keys, car, house, garage, all to the front office. Griff said, that is all yours. Or sorry, SVG said, that is all yours. I don't want anything to do with it. Just let me coach and I will do a damn good job. Didn't say that verbatim, but I'm paraphrasing pretty damn well. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, I mean, to look at it, he, he doesn't want to control scouting any of that. Not only did he doesn't want it, he fully trusts Griff. To take care of it that's been so well established throughout this whole process is that he trusts griff griff has won a championship has led an organization that includes lebron james rose up from the very bottom coming from phoenix and he sees what griff sees he likes what griff sees and he trusts him to fulfill the role of his job now, to go into that a little bit deeper from today's press conference, SVG said he's excited just to coach. He really does not, he really does not want to do that again. He said uh, that, quote, one of the things I'm really excited about is just getting back into a coaching role and letting Griff and Trajan and Swin and Bryson Graham worry about the uh, that other stuff. Griff, Griff mentioned the other day me watching a draft candidate and I started shaking. I'm not sure if that's what I wanted to so in typical Van, Gan Van Gundy fashion, throwing out jokes throughout the whole press conference, talked about Will Guillory's shoes uh, in the background that Will had on the Zoom call. But anyway, um, basically getting at the fact that coaches should coach, front office should take up executive stuff, and he's more than happy to just coach, more than happy to just coach. And as Pelicans fans, as Pelicans media, pretty excited to hear that, pretty happy to hear that. You know, the one downside of SVG's career has really been Detroit. Three losing seasons out of four. And 
in that scenario, he was the president of basketball operations. We know that. We've talked about it a lot. We talked about it with Duncan Smith of Forbes. He's their Pistons expert. It's wearing too many hats. That's what it is. It's what it is. It's too much. It's a lot. You know, personally, when I have a lot of things going on and you add another on top of that, it's easy to get overwhelmed, um, let alone... <laughs> In an NBA head coach position, you're throwing in the president of basketball operations, which is a whole nother damn full-time job. Griff, and he's like, my hands are off the reins. I'm going to go back to the gym and work on uh, Brandon Ingram's jump shot. Like, <laughs> he's done. He's, he is done doing that, and, and that's great to hear. It's great to hear. He is just going to be in the gym working with the guys, working on their game, and that's where the Pels will go forward from here. You know, for those of you who have been athletes and you're on a team that you trust, you know people are going to fulfill their roles, you know the job's going to get done, this has that feel to it. It has a genuine, sincere trust to it where they weren't even in the same room, SBG and Griff weren't even in the same room, and you could feel the trust, the palpable. It was, it was palpable. It was palpable that there's a relationship there SVG is excited. He is thrilled to be in New Orleans. And Griff and Trajan Langdon and the rest of the front office, they're happy to have him. If you haven't watched it yet, you can feel it. You can feel it. You can take my word for it, but if you want to watch it, I would recommend it. You get a lot more out of it than what I'm bringing here today. We're just doing breakdowns. We're not doing specificity necessarily of quotes, although we are throwing some quotes out there. Now, in terms of accountability, you had to know this was going to be brought up uh, in today's press conference. We've been talking about it so much on the podcast, so much on YouTube, and with ESPN 1420, Greg Larnard on uh, the Word with G in Lafayette. We've talked about it there, talked about it with the guys from Propel's talk. This is a lot of what we've been hearing about Stan Van Gundy. His, he is going to bring accountability to New Orleans to a place where we haven't had it in a long time. The Pelicans have not had accountability in their locker room with their teammates, anything at all. It's been a main reason why people started to enjoy the idea of bringing him in. And I'm with it. I'm right there with you. So he and Griff were asked about this in reference to strictly just Zion. Zion's accountability, staying in shape, getting in the gym, stuff like that. But they turned it to the team, saying it's a, quote, we thing. And absolutely. When you ask questions like that, it's 9.9 9 times out of 10, 99 times out of 100. They're going to make it a reference to the team thing, not just specific players. I didn't like the question, but they turned it around. They did a great job with that. So SVG went on to say that, Rather than, quote, coming down on players, he's more of a proponent of holding players accountable based on their goals in terms of accountability, you know, in terms of the we versus me. You know, it's a we thing. It's, it's the entire team in terms of accountability. It's not just one specific player or players that they'll be focusing on. But we talked about this with Liam Santamaria of NB, I think it's NBL Talk. Forgive me if I got that wrong. I don't have it off the top of my head. We can look here on Art19. Um, NBL Overtime. Sorry, co-host of NBL Overtime, and he's a lead NBL writer for the NBL website. Basically said the same thing about Will Weaver, is it's not coming down on them for their standards. It's coming down on them for, say, Zion t tells SVG, I want to be the best player in the NBA. That's what SVG's bringing to the table every time they work out and I mean, I'm not saying that Zion does this, but if Zion's like struggling on a drill or, or doesn't want to do something or, or is not wanting to recover on defense because we know he wasn't good at that this last year, SVG will look at him and say, I thought you wanted to be the best player in the NBA. That's accountability right there. I'm going to hold you to your standards, not you to my standards, because that makes it about me and not about you and your teammates. You want to lead this team to a playoff berth? Better get in the gym. You want to be an all-star? Better get in the gym. 
better work on your handle, better work on your passing, your jump shot. This isn't about me, this is about you. You said you wanted to do that, hold him to that standard. We talked about that with Will Weaver. I love that. I still want Will Weaver on this staff, but the fact that SVG hit that home and mentioned that is, is fantastic. And he reiterated, once he put that together, he reiterated it and said, accountability is about helping them. It's not about coming down on them. It's about making them better. It's about lifting them up and taking them to that next level. And we talked about, or excuse me, they talked about accountability a little bit more in the, in the uh, presser. Uh, and uh, SVG did a really good job of, of hitting it home. So in, in terms of helping them and lifting them up, really that, where that comes from is pointing at the youth of this team because there is a lot of youth on this team. And SVG said he likes the mix of the youth and the veterans, but they did talk about the, the youth on the squad. And he said they'll need a lot of help in a lot of different areas. And one uh, more specifically we'll talk about here, and it's going to be more than obvious, but he said there's a lot of teaching to do and development will be a focus. Now, that's been a focus for media members, for, for fans when talking about the next head coach in New Orleans. That's a big proponent of why we've talked about Kenny Atkinson, of why we've talked about, a little bit about Will Weaver in terms of development, we talked about Jerry Stackhouse in terms of development as well but svg has done his fair share and and like we said at the top of the show he is a combination of development and win now kind of that meet in the middle kind of candidate so he is really really great at that he's aware of where the pels have to grow he talked about it on the low post podcast he talked about their need to improve transition defense defense in general but I love this quote. I love it. He said he doesn't want to use the youth as an excuse. Made sure to point this out. This was at the very top of the press conference when they started to take questions. We're not going to use youth as an excuse. So he's like, oh, if we had three turnovers, turnovers in the last two minutes because of our youth. That's not coming out of New Orleans. You're not going to hear that at press conferences this year. After games, not a chance. Not blaming youth for their issues. I mean, he, he said it. This is, they're young, but they're also really, really talented. And they got drafted as high as they did because of that talent. And you can't blame youth anymore. He's aware of what they can do. He's aware of what they're bad at. But, bad is a strong word, but not good at. He's going to adjust it. He's going to work on it. But there will not be excuse of youth in 2020, 2021. Love to hear that. Inject that quote into my veins. I love it. Now, in terms of strengths that SVG sees on this roster, he did talk about that combination of youth and veterans. And he referenced Brandon Ingram and, and Zion in terms of the youth that he loves to see on this team. Also, obviously, talked about J.J. Redick and Drew Holiday briefly in terms of the veteran and veteran leadership. He talked about what we talked about fairly recently in, in uh, with, with Jonathan Alisea, talking about the fact that J.J. has influence on this team. And if there's a lot of people that are listening to J.J., Inherently, they're more than likely going to listen to Stan Van Gundy, too, which is good. Glad to hear it. Now, when talking about Brandon Ingram, when talking about Zion, we're kind of clumping some stuff together here from different parts of the press conference. But Stan went on to say that Brandon Ingram can, well, one, get his own shots from anywhere. We know that he gets to his spots. He gets to his shots. And he said, quote, plays like a point guard which is kind of rad. I don't know that I've heard that necessarily about Brandon Ingram a lot. I'd have to go back and, and really watch again some tape to, to see that. But we're playing in a positionless league, and he talked about putting the ball in Brandon Ingram, Zion, Drew Holiday's hands in this coming season. And if he really believes that, that'd be sweet. I mean, we saw B.I. initiate the offense this year, um, so I guess you could say he looks like a point guard in that way, and he's got handles and, and all that. He's obviously a good shooter, which comes 
most of the time with a point guard. So we'll give him that. But uh, to, to continue, talked about Zion. And he said that the way Zion plays is unique. And there was no comp, or comp like he did. He said, Brandon Ingram plays like a point guard. He's like, I have no comparison for, for Zion Williamson. And he was asked about what position Zion will play, either the four or the five. And he said that Zion is a playmaker and a multi-talented guy. And I don't want to limit him to a position. Yes! Yes! So we talked about the Draymond Green kind of role with Jonathan Alisaia. I don't know how feasible that is with Zion. We know he's a great passer. Obviously, putting the ball on the floor is not something he's fantastic at right now, at least, you know, towards the top of the key, stuff like that. He, he does his work close to the basket, but we'll see. I mean, I love that. I love that. He said that he has a vision of what he wants to do with Zion and what the plan is going into the season. Obviously, you got to have a plan with how short the turnaround's going to be but he's not limiting him to a position and he's not limiting him based on that vision. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is why I like Billy Donovan. This is why I liked Will Weaver. Stan is just bringing in all these little characteristics and pieces that we like from other coaches and instilling it into what he believes this team can do in their philosophy going forward this season. I love that. Oh, I love it so much. And um, basically, what he said was he wants to see him play this season. He has a vision, but he wants to see him play this season and what he can do with the guys around him. Obviously, we don't know what the rest of the roster is going to look like. We don't know who they're going to draft. We don't know what the free agency situation is going to look like. There's a lot to be discovered about what the Pels, the, the organization as a whole, is going to look like. <laughs> Yeah, up until like a week ago, we had no freaking idea. So there's a lot to be seen yet. Basically doesn't want to have him in a definitive role yet, which we love to hear it. We love to hear it. If you're watching on YouTube with Jonathan Alisea, that, that uh, conversation we just had talked about accountability and I did this fist bump. I feel the same damn way about not limiting Zion to a position. Love to hear it. Also talked about things that need to change and things that need to improve. And he said, number one, number one is defense. It's obvious. It's something that we knew, but it's still good to hear. Still great to hear from your head coach, uh, the new guy who's coming in, taking over, going to be leading things in New Orleans. He said, things have to change on the defensive end of the floor and talked about it, the interior defense that, the interior defense was a problem this year. And he also talked about how to fix that. And there are a couple different ways. Keeping the ball out of the interior so the interior guys don't have to even do anything. Um, working with the, the guys who are on the interior to have options, not have to just do one thing or another. He said that Jackson Hayes is going to be a shot blocker, which we love to hear. And obviously Hayes has that athleticism and if he really gets those fundamentals and the skills down with SVG who we know can bring that to at Jackson Hayes that'll be really fun to watch um and we know that he talked about the issue of like I said transition defense talked about that on the low post podcast as well so SVG has a vision for the defense and we'll see more of that as we go. It wasn't talked about a whole lot, really, in today's presser, yesterday's presser. <laughs> Can you tell I recorded this the day before? Anyway, uh, so I know David Grubb and Ollie Cosell asked some awesome, awesome questions in that presser, too. Uh, so the guys from the Bird Rides, some of the homies from, from the team. Now, analytics has been a big, hasn't necessarily been a big issue, but it's been a big topic of conversation for Stan Van Gundy, like how he feels about analytics. And if you ended up watching, <laughs> if you ended up watching the Game of Zones Isle of Van Gundy, which you have, if you have not yet, open another tab in YouTube if you're on there and look it up. Watch it once this is over. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. Watch it when you're done. You got to watch it. Game of Zones by Bleacher Report, The Isle of Van Gundy. It's hilarious. He and Jeff have kind of this 
reputation of hating analytics, hating flopping, not liking Dwight Howard, uh, which is fairly easy to do at that point in time and based on what you know about his relationship with Dwight Howard in the uh, Orlando Magic situation. But anywho, analytics. There was a conference, Christian Clark tweeted out a little blip of a video from a conference that he spoke at talking about analytics. Great stuff. If you want to check that out, I retweeted it. So it's under all of the live tweeting that happened today. But he did talk about analytics today as well. And yesterday, <laughs> yesterday as well. Um, he said one of the more underrated additions to the team this off season was Michael Hartman to the analytics department. Now, if you're like me and don't know a lot about Michael Hartman, he's an analytics guy. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to offer you at the moment. I probably should have looked more up about that before recording the podcast, but here we are. You want to have any questions about it? I'll look it up at some point in time. He said, quote, I started by asking one question when talking with Michael Hartman. Quote, I started by asking one question and then I had another idea I wanted to answer, answer with. And then I had another idea of something we could do. So SVG is investing in analytics. He isn't necessarily going to base everything on it. That's clear. But he is interested on what it could bring to the table. If you watch this video, he said a lot of coaches do what they do to keep their jobs. That includes assistants. That includes people in the analytics department. He said, your job as a head coach is to win games. So if analytics factors into that, I will use analytics. He's very excited to work with Michael Hartman. Great stuff to hear. Great stuff to hear. You'll love to hear it. Now, not a lot of people, general basketball fans, know a lot about analytics but it's become so key in today's basketball world. And if you look at who the possibility, like the potential guys you bring in for assistance, Will Weaver, Ime Odoka, chances are these guys are going to look into it. They'll be at least like Will Weaver could lead the pack, I mean, pave the way for the Pelicans to really get invested into analytics, not necessarily to the degree where it's like the Rockets where everything's numbers, Clearly, that doesn't lead to winning. So, but to a point where it really helps them. And SVG looks to not only be interested, but excited and ready to learn and ready to work things through. He clearly had this itch right here. I don't know why right there, but just happened to be right there about wanting to get into, wanting to get into coaching again. Clearly had it. This is the classic thing where somebody's passionate about something and they can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about it. This is me with this podcast. This is your mom with baking, your dad and cycling. It's the same thing. It's an itch that you just have to scratch. This is what he's doing. He's like, I got so excited about it. We talked about this and this and this, and he's ready to go. He is ready to go. And one, a couple things I should say that he talked about with, with building culture. And so he's not just excited to, to coach, but he's excited to really do the things that this young team needs, like building culture in New Orleans, because I haven't had a winning culture in a hot minute. So, yeah. He said he has two real beliefs on culture. And the one thing was, to quote him verbatim, was that it has very little to do with what you say and it has everything to do with what you do on an everyday basis. You can't just talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk. Talked about his time in Miami and you know we've talked about heat culture. That's been the, the thing that's been really talked about this offseason a lot with their run to the NBA championship it happened during the playoffs as well. But SBG said that wasn't a term. Nobody talked about culture when he was in Miami, but everybody knew what it was because everybody did it every day. Pat Riley established that in Miami. And now SBG feels prepared to do that. He talked about a lot of shared values between the front office, between the team, between the players. And it's just got to be something you do every day. 
to quote him verbatim, he said, so you build your culture day by day, interaction by interaction, practice by practice, step by step. Over time, people will see what our organization is all about, what our leaders are all about in the organization, and then down to the players, and then the players that are around us for a while pass it on to the other players. It's not simple, but it's simple. He knows how to practice it. It's not easy, but it can be done. Second thing he said he believes about culture in the NBA. He says, as much as Griff, Trajan, Swin, and Bryson, and even above us to Mrs. Benson and to Dennis Lasha, Losha, I don't know how to pronounce that guy's name, Lausha, to myself and the coaching staff, as much as any of us try to set the example on a culture for our basketball team, what our culture actually ends up becoming will be what our best players decide that it's going to be. So those are the guys that have to take the responsibility for creating the kind of culture that we all want here with the Pelicans. Yes, yes, a hundred thousand times. Yes, David Griffin. I mean, this, this is what it comes down to is that it's at every level, every level of sport, every level of basketball. Look at your high school teams. Your coach can want something and try to drive it home and, and try to instill it into your players. But if I mean, it's got to be believed by the top players. It's got to be impar imparted by the top players. I mean, there's a reason. <laughs> when I was in high school, we ran cross country. We were damn good some years when we stayed healthy. And it came down from the top. I was team captain. And a year after we graduated, that was two years after I graduated, that was the last time we've had an individual qualify for state for the guys. It permeates. It's got to come from the players. It's got to come from the players. And if it's not coming from the players, players aren't buying in, you're not getting it. SVG knows that. SVG knows it. Now, in terms of being ready for next season, this is something that we'll talk about a little bit more as we go forward because the season's coming up quick, apparently, December 22nd. Who would have freaking guessed? I need a moment so selfish by the ownership in the NBA, by the NBA. This is such a money grab. They want to play 72 games starting December 22nd. Care about your players, my ass. You care about your fucking, mm, your wallet. That's what you care about. There is no, the NBA Players Association should throw a freaking fit because that is absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. It was reported by Sham Sharania, LeBron James and other high profile players are upset. No kidding. No kidding. They don't get an off season. Fine, you had those four months. Players came back. DeMontis Sabonis got hurt. I'm shocked other players didn't get hurt too. I mean, we're seeing it in the, in the NFL. It's different for the NFL because it's a contact, more of a contact sport. But a lot of players are going to get hurt. I mean, they're coming back for 72 games. Not what it was, 30. And then plus playoffs, it's 100 games for the best teams. I know you want to get back to that regular timeline, and hopefully we will next year. Hopefully the NBA will next year. But just cut the games, man. We don't need 72 games. And I don't mean we by the Pelicans. I mean we as in the NBA as a whole. It's frustrating. I think it, made, it was made clear that the NBA didn't care about their players by doing the bubble. They handled it really well. So contradictory, I guess. Maybe it was an image thing rather than caring for the players. Anyway, this is just so obviously about money. It's just kind of sad. They're going to try to get people to come to games, which, hey, Smoothie King Center's open, maybe. But I don't like it. I'm starting way too early. 
there's going to be travel involved. That puts your risk higher for the virus. It's just frustrating. Anyway, Griff said that the coming of the season is daunting. He said it twice, actually, which is totally accurate, totally fair. That's a lot to do in a small amount of time. I said it. They're going to be doing training camp at the same time they're looking for free agents. Training camp's going to start before the NBA draft. So young guys are going to be starting a month after everybody else. You got to move up the draft in that case. Like, what the hell? If camp starts a week from Monday or this coming Monday, I don't remember what it was, and the draft is in two weeks, the young guys are going to be getting there after the old guys? How the hell does that make sense? Starting December 22nd, they get a month with the team? A month? What? I mean, Trajan said they're working through things every day, which, great. Great. That's good. That's the one quote I got from Trajan in this whole thing. He talked about SVG a little bit, how he's excited for SVG to come, but... Um, Stan really wrapped it up well. He did really wrap it up well. He said, quote, I didn't say I was going to be quoting the whole thing, but I got some good quotes in here. We're going to be ready to compete anytime, anywhere, under, quote, any conditions. I think in some ways this is a great way to get this message across to your players. When do you have to be ready to start camp? Well, whenever they tell us. So that means get ready now. It carries over into the season. We've got a back-to-back, -back, second night, no excuse. Anytime, anywhere, under any conditions, we're going to be ready to compete. That may be a little bit quicker than I'm comfortable with, but that's the way it is, and we will be ready. It stresses me out as someone who covers the NBA and the Pelicans. I can't imagine what it's doing to them. I can't imagine what it's doing to these guys who are going to get drafted. Hmm. But that's the type of leadership you want right there. Anytime, anywhere, under any conditions. Hmm. There are a lot of things that hit home that SVG said, but those that's that's some pretty big stuff right there. Love to hear it. Folks, we will be back tomorrow with a podcast on potential assistant coaches. Hopefully, we'll have a guest coming on about that here soon as well. So do not miss that. Very excited for that one coming up here in just a couple days. Of course, we'll be talking about when those players or if the coaches get hired in the next few days. We'll talk about that instead, what they'll bring to the team there's so many different things that could happen. This doesn't just affect the NBA. This is affecting your boy and other people who cover the NBA as well. So uh, this will this will be fun. It'll be fun from our perspective too. You're gonna be getting content all the freaking time, all the time. So uh, stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's gonna be fun. In the meantime, go follow at Elliot Clough on Twitter. And if you are on YouTube or if you're not on YouTube listening to this, head over to YouTube and subscribe to Elliot Clough. Hit a thumbs up on as many videos as you would like. It really, really helps us out. And if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure to hit write a review. Sorry. Hit rate and then leave a review on the bottom. Subscribe and or follow depending on where you're listening to the podcast. Always go check out Believe.com and TheBirdRights.com for articles from myself and other former guests. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in today. If you're on YouTube, sorry about that break. Had somebody call me, so we're going to try to put those together. It might be a little iffy, but you'll see there. So thanks for tuning in today once again. I'm Elliot Clough. This was Believe in the New Orleans Pelicans. <laughs>